At E3 in 2014, we were all awestruck by the trailer to a game called No Man's Sky. Sean Murray, the game's director and a co-founder of the indie studio Hello Games, shyly took to the stage and touted it as a space exploration game inspired by the dust jackets of classic sci-fi literature, an infinite, procedurally generated universe. That term, procedurally generated, means that the game takes handcrafted assets and then uses an algorithm to randomize them, creating entirely unique landscapes, flora, fauna, and even music for every one of the over 18 quintillion planets available to explore. It's ambitious to say the least, especially for just a handful of indie developers, and buzz surrounding the game skyrocketed. The trailer looked incredible, with striking colour palettes, ecosystems teeming with life, and the ability to seamlessly hop from planet to planet. But more than that, it sounded amazing, thanks to the awe-inducing song that was used. Debutante, taken from the 2010 album We Were Exploding Anyway, by experimental post-rock band 65 Days of Static. These British noisemakers were Sean Murray's favourite band, and he would often blast their music in the Hello Games office to help inspire the team in their cinematic direction and emotion. Sean approached 65 Days to license Debutante for the No Man's Sky E3 trailer, secretly dreaming of convincing them to write the soundtrack for the entire game. Unbeknownst to him, the band were looking for a new project to work on, and upon approving Debutante for the trailer, also secretly planned to convince Sean to let them do the game's soundtrack. Because as it turns out, 65 Days of Static were the perfect people up to the impossible task of making music for an infinite universe. We're not people who make computer games, and we're not people who make computer game music. We're a weird instrumental band who make music for entirely different reasons. We're naive in a useful way. We put the emotional elements of the music over the practicalities of making it happen. We don't care what's not possible. No Man's Sky is a game about exploring the unknown frontiers of the universe, and 65 Days of Static are a band driven by the frontier, inspired by pushing boundaries and charting new ground. There's already more than enough bands and more than enough music, said 65 co-founding member Paul Walensky. So if you're going to be that self-indulgent to be in a band, then at the very least, you really need to try and do something useful. To the young post-rock band, that meant breaking the mould of the genre they found themselves in. They incorporated electronic sounds into their music, they experimented with their instruments and gear in unintentional ways, and they embraced new technologies such as live coding, in which you basically program a digital synth from scratch in front of an audience. After a short break following the release of We Were Exploding Anyway, the band started to make music for space, rescoring the 1972 sci-fi film Silent Running, as man explores the mysteries of an unknown and limitless universe. But I don't just mean outer space. They also scored for physical space, providing the music for Sleepwalk City, an art installation at the Millennium Gallery Museum in their hometown of Sheffield, which allowed the band to dip their toes into making music with an algorithm. So when given the opportunity to provide debutante for the No Man's Sky trailer, there was really no one else more qualified to score a procedurally generated space exploration video game. Hello Games gave the band complete creative control over the soundtrack, telling them to just write the next 65 days of static record. But it's not that simple. Making an album or even a film soundtrack is worlds apart from making a soundtrack for a video game. Debutante can work as is, because it's a linear song scoring a linear trailer. They both can only be played start to finish in one way, and they build the same narrative arc every single time. But a game like No Man's Sky is non-linear. Every player will have a completely unique experience, starting on a different planet and exploring the universe according to their own whims. So 65 Days of Static had to fit a linear album into a non-linear experience. As a result, the official soundtrack is not the actual in-game score. 
as Joe Shrewsbury put it, you're not hearing the album, you're hearing an echo of it. There are passages taken directly from the OST that score key moments in the game. At the very beginning of the game, as you explore your first planet and gather resources to repair your crashed ship, various tracks can play in a seemingly complete album form. For instance, the track Heliosphere is a curious sounding song led by a bendy sci-fi synth and sheening guitars underneath, all of which can be heard together here. A segment lifted straight from Blueprint for a Slow Machine steadily grows as you leave that planet and first enter space. And docking at a space station for the first time cues in the climactic final minute of the track Asimov in a burst of pure post-rock bliss. These are predictable events that most players will trigger in the first few hours, and scoring these moments with specific compositions aids in the game's organic storytelling. The music brings meaning to these scenes, filling you with pride and wonder, and helping you to appreciate the significance of the moment. Now this part is similar to films, where the focus is on a specific scene, and a piece of music can be written and even timed to it. But these story moments in No Man's Sky are few and far between. Most of your time in-game will be spent exploring planets, gathering resources, getting into fights with the natives, colonizing their homeland. However, the soundtrack doesn't have dedicated area themes for planets as you would normally expect, because either you'd be hearing the same music over and over again, or there would have to be 18 quintillion different planet themes. So 65 Days took the hardest easy way out and used an algorithm to create generative soundscapes. While the band spent a year writing and crafting the actual album so they could focus on its emotional qualities, a further year was spent turning it into pieces of music that the game could actually use. They deconstructed all of the soundtrack songs back into their core parts a guitar drone, a piano line, a drum pattern, and so on, so that they could all be used as samples by the game's music engine. They then went back to the studio and improvised on all these individual parts, creating new variations by reshaping melodies, changing the chords, and just experimenting in the typical 65 days fashion. This reiterative process is quite normal when writing music, but instead of reaching one complete final version of the track and then leaving the rest on the cutting room floor, everything was made to be thrown into the game. The band built a library of over two and a half thousand different musical samples, all based off the compositions from the original soundtrack, which the game is then able to pull together and create entirely new and unique arrangements. This here is a visualization created by the band, which shows how fragments of tracks fade in and out of the mix in order to create a soundscape. And there are various types of soundscapes too. While floating in space or exploring a peaceful planet, the soundscapes produced will be calm and ethereal. And if you happen to stop to appreciate a beautiful vista, you may notice more layers being added to the music. But if you find yourself in combat or the middle of a storm, the soundscape will throw much more loud and abrasive noises at you. A completely lifeless wasteland of a planet might not have any music at all. You never know what is on the surface of that next planet until your curiosity takes hold of you. And the soundscapes feed into that same curiosity by never repeating the same track, and not even having any loops. The music will always be new. Paul describes these soundscapes as the difference between telling a story and creating an environment in which stories can be imagined. 
There is no way to directly score every single moment every player will have across 18 quintillion different planets. But a reactive score can make the player feel that the story they are weaving is important. As an interactive medium, games naturally enable each player to tell their own unique story. And so a game's official soundtrack is really only a single representation of one hypothetical person's experience. We get to share in the creation of a new piece of music that did not exist in the world before we made it happen. A personal album that tells your unique story in that universe. Thanks for watching. This video was only made possible thanks to the generous support of my patrons. You too can join the community and help make these videos happen while getting some sweet perks out of it too, just like these top tier human beings right here.